And so thank yep. you so much for this idea, which is like so simple in a way, but so widely useful. Yeah, well, uh, I should fill you in on some details. There's some follow-on work that we discovered in this story. Uh, good news is it was ultimately a good idea, but there's some caveats. Uh, so I should say, once we launched this benchmark, uh, we, my first response is, we should probably check to see if this actually compares to a human uh, judge. Um, and we didn't have a lot of budget for doing human evaluation at that point. Uh, and so we instead decided to try to run an arena. Um, and so we wanted to build a website where people would actually, in the wild, have conversations with the bots. Um, the hope here is that we'd get not just our prompted discussion points, but what humans would say, uh, what humans would ask, the crazy stuff that people might come up with, um, and then let them judge which models perform better. Um, and that is why we launched the chatbot arena. Nice. Yeah. Let's talk about that more. Yeah, so the, the Chatbot Arena was a, a fun project. It started actually as like, how do we make this a game to get people to participate, make it fun? Uh, we, we took the Vicuña model, several of the other open source models that had emerged at that point in time. We actually made API calls to the commercial vendors uh, to get you know, the state-of-the-art models as well. Um, and then, yeah, we put a website together where anyone can go. It's still there. If you go to arena.lmsys.org right now, you can uh, chat with any one of the bots. You can chat with them directly in a setting where you know which bot you're chatting with. Or, and this is the more fun part, you chat with them blinded. So you chat with a pair of bots. You don't know which ones you're chatting with. You start a conversation and both bots respond to you. And you continue that conversation speaking to both bots at once. Um, and at any point, you can say, you know, A is better or B is better or tie or they're both terrible. Uh, and we take that signal and we use that to create a ranking. Um, and so we've ranked all the bots. Um, we ended up using uh, a ranking system called the ELO ranking system, which was mm -hmm. developed uh, for the chess community, mm -hmm. uh, has been adopted by the gamer community, has been you know incorporated in sports betting. It's a really cool uh, mechanism. Um, and that gives us an overall ordering of the AIs, uh, of the bots. Um, and maybe not surprisingly, the top of that ordering are things like GPT-4. Claude is right there behind them. Um, and then as we go down, we see GPT-3.5. And then Vicuña uh, stays at the top. Um, in the beginning, we were worried, why is Vicuña so good? No one's going to believe our leaderboard if Vicuña's up there. Maybe we should run a little bit longer. Let's get Koala, one of the other models developed at Berkeley. I, I should say Koala was developed at Berkeley at the same time in collaboration with the Vicuña team. Um, Koala was a little bit below Vicuña. Uh, Rolling back to the story, it's kind of funny. Uh, Koala was lower than Vicuña because they didn't remove HTML tags. That's uh, the best of our knowledge. So just a little bit of data cleaning. Again, punchline, think about your data. Um, so we did some better data cleaning. Uh, Vicuña's was better. But you know, if we look at the overall leaderboard, Koala's below Vicuña. And then uh, since then, a bunch of other LLMs have kind of merged in between. Um, I think we have like maybe over 20 models now. There's a lot of models on yeah, the board. There's, I have some mm -hmm. stats on that. So you collected over 53,000 votes regarding 33,000 mm -hmm. conversations for 22 models. Yep. Um, and all of that was released. So at the time of recording, this is very fresh. Um, on July 20th, mm -hmm. um, you released that conversation data set uh, to the world so that people can take advantage of all of those tens of thousands of conversations across all those well, almost two dozen models. Yep. Yeah. So we released the data. That was a, a, a nerve wracking point in the research progress. Uh, you know, releasing data is something you should do with care. Uh, we had been hoping to release data a lot sooner. Um, we removed PII because uh, we wanted to release data that didn't have any PII. That took some work. Um, and then we ended up deciding to release all the data, including the uh, the conversations that we would have not, or you know, we wouldn't have continued in the actual bot in the arena itself. Um, so we we have offensive content filters. Uh, we actually kept the offensive content and uh, registered the filters as well, um, with the hope that you know the research community can start to study how these bots respond to offensive content when it's present. Um, yeah, so that was a big release. My hope is that will help shape research in you know our LHF and the ability, the design of valuation functions to or value functions to to um, you know, train models in the future. Uh, so yeah, it's a one of the you know as a uh, as an academic at Berkeley, one of the exciting things that we get to do is focus on just general impact and building data, building models that will hopefully shape research in the future. Even when we look at Vicuña, you know, I, I frame it as a battle with our colleagues at Stanford, but realistically, uh, we looked at it as a chance actually to test some of the training tools we've been developing. Uh, we have some projects to enable sky computing. We have some projects to enable distributed training, distributed serving. Um, and so Vicuña was a very natural kind of extension of how do we test those tools? It was actually led by the system students um, who were developing those tools that kind of picked up that effort. Uh, and so, you know, for, for research, it's helped shape you know, a lot of what we're doing in, in now more efficient serving technologies, 
uh, better use of GPUs for you know, statistical multiplexing. All that was kind of driven by the work with Pecunia. And in fact, even the fast chat arena, this, you know, the place where people can chat with our bots, gives us a mechanism to evaluate um, you know, the underlying systems uh, and how they can serve these models. Yeah. So it's, it's been a, a big research effort. Uh, and, and the release of data sets is you know, one of the, the, the important steps in that effort.